The story behind the story. In faith, culture, news, and entertainment. This is this is Billy Hallowell. Hey everybody, welcome to the Billy Hallowell podcast. I am going to share a message today that is just convicting for me. It's incredibly convicting, and it really stems from an amazing email that I received from a friend uh, who actually befriended me back when I was working at The Blaze. Uh, She was following our work at The Blaze, and her name is Dina, and we've kept in contact um, over the years. And she has done some really amazing things. She made this amazing piece of artwork for my girls that we have hanging up in our house, and she's just an incredible woman of God. And She sent me an email the other day and revealed some really um, sad news, and it was news that took me back a little bit, and it's that she is um, suffering from, she was diagnosed with pulmonary fibrosis, which I didn't know much about, and I did some digging and, and read about it, and it's a progressive disease that affects the lungs, and... I just want to share some of what she wrote in this email, uh, because 90% of the email was positive and uplifting, and it you know, I, it takes a lot for me to cry or get to a point of tears, and I really was in tears as I was reading this, and I'm sharing it with you guys today because I think there's something here for all of us, and I'm just going to read a part of this letter here. She wrote to me, I'm really okay. That's not me being in denial. It's really me just saying, okay, God, if this is what your plan is, I'm going to roll with it. There is excitement and anticipation that I'm actually going to heaven and meeting him face to face. Of course, there's an anxiety over the unknown of what the actual process of dying will be like, but my trust is in the Lord. And if he can suffer on the cross for me, I can do this. And I know I won't be alone. He is with me always. And You know, that just, it struck me so deeply because this is somebody who has been given really difficult news. And I think so many of us, we talk about faith and how powerful faith is and how we love Jesus. And the minute something strikes us, sometimes that changes. Or a lot of us, and and I'm guilty of this, we coast through life with Jesus in the back of our mind, acting as though he's in the forefront. When something strikes us, we then cling to him. Um, and, And I think Dina has always, from what I've seen from afar, been somebody who's supporting the gospel, talking about God. And to hear this after this reaction uh, was incredible. But I want to read the next part because I am so guilty of this. I get consumed with the kids or I get annoyed because they've made messes or there's chaos going on and I let these little things eat away at me. Um, and, and there's that, but then there's also this fractured culture we live in and you know that the fighting on social media and the drama. And I want to read you what Dina said, because this is something we all need. She said, I think about words a lot. So many times, especially in social media, words are used as a weapon, a weapon that can pierce a heart as swiftly and as painfully as any knife. And I will admit, a few years ago, I threw a dagger or two myself. But the more I drew closer to God, the more my desire to be a loving, shining light for him took over my spirit. Oh, I'm not perfect. I'm human and as flawed as anyone else. But I measure my words now and make sure that they can express my feelings without anger and that the person hearing them will never feel hurt by them. The realization that that there will be a finite number of words left for me to share with others has taken this normally introverted and quiet person and opened me up to being more forthcoming with my thoughts and feelings about life, things I've learned through the years, memories I have treasured, and most importantly, how I feel about God and what he has done for me. I don't look at this as a death sentence. I look at it as an opportunity. You hear people say things like make every day count and you think, yeah, that looks good on a coffee mug or whatever, but that's what all of us should be doing every day. And if you had the opportunity to fully understand how much time that really meant, what would you do? What would you change? And she went on to say, don't sweat the small stuff. That's another good one for a mug, but also very sound advice. How many times have we let something really insignificant bother us to the point of where we start a fight with our spouse? When the kids are running through the house making those shredded paper snowflakes, do we lose it or do we embrace it and laugh joyfully with them? My words aren't wasted on what is wrong around me, but are used to glorify what is very, very right. My words are love. And this just struck me when she sent me this email. It stopped me in my tracks. I found myself really reflecting on the fact that I sweat the small stuff all the time and that we let so many days go by without without sharing what we really think, without showing love to other people, getting annoyed with those around us. I'm guilty of that too, by the way. Uh, and, and really 
here's Dina being given this diagnosis, and she doesn't know. I mean, a lot of people who have this uh, disease, pulmonary fibrosis, they um, usually survive between three to five years from what I've read from the diagnosis point. So she knows there's, there is potentially a limited amount of time for her, but we also know that we serve a big God who does amazing things and that healing is possible and that with treatment, you know, Dina could be around a long time, but the reality is her words are, are numbered in her mind. And She's speaking to that here in such a beautiful way to make us think deeper. If we knew our words are numbered, what would we say? If you knew this was your last day, if you knew this was your last weekend, if you knew this was your last week and a half on earth, what would you say to those around you? How would you react to your kids making a mess or to a minor crisis at your house that you blow out of proportion? So many of us struggle with these things, and I just... Really, Dina, thank you as a friend. Thank you for sending me this. I have I had to share it. I hope we can all pray for Dina and just reflect on what she said. That the way she ended that, my words are love. And I think all of our words need to be love. We're living in such fractured and difficult and horrible times where we mistreat one another, where we relegate one another into these corners, we ignore one another. And I talk about this all the time. I feel like I'm beating this drum all the time. Um, But I'm not always living that out. And I'm not perfect. Just like Dina's mentioning how she's flawed as anyone else. I know I am too. And I think God you know, had Dina send me this at the right time, because I have been sweating a lot of the small stuff. Um, You know, I tend to complain about things. And here I am living in the best country on earth, living in a nice house with an amazing family. And it's so easy to focus on what we don't have. And, you know, being spiritually healthy is an important thing. But Jesus told us, you know, when it comes to the most important commandments, love God, love others. I think a lot of us forget that latter part, and I need to work on that. Dina, thank you so much for the witness, for the email that you sent me, for getting me to think. I haven't done an episode of this show in a couple of days, even though it's a daily show, because I've really been reflecting and thinking about how will I talk about this message, and I hope I did it justice. I just wanted to read your words. Thank you so much again for sending this. Guys, please pray for Dina. I will be back tomorrow with another episode of the Billy Hollowell podcast. Thanks so much. Love God, love others. Thanks for listening to the Billy Hollowell podcast. Visit Billy on Facebook or Twitter at Billy Hollowell for more on faith, culture, entertainment, and plenty more. The podcast you just heard was published with Anchor. Got something you want to say to the creator of this show? Send them a voice message using the Anchor app free for iOS and Android.